Welcome to the Unitel UC Client Training. This is the Unified Communications Platform. We highly recommend that you use a Chrome web browser. While other web browsers will work and are supported, we have found that Chrome works by far the best. You want to go to your address bar and type in cloudpbx.askunitel.com. It'll bring you to the login screen where you can enter your username, which is usually your email address, and your password, which will be provided to you by us or your system administrator. Of course, you have your forgot password and you can click on Remember Me. And here's the main screen of the Unified Communications Client. First time users will see a uh, tutorial bubble that'll show them the different areas, um, much like this kind of does here, uh, but I have already uh, been in here once, so that I got rid of that. This is actually the help screen. I can hit the X here and get out of it. If I want to see it again, I can just hit this. And this will take you to the different areas like the dial pad or the soft phone, um, search for contact, things like that. I'm going to show you all that anyhow, so I'm, I'm going to exit out of there. All right. And I can click on start call here now, or I can click on here. It takes you to the same spot. I can dial a phone number using the soft phone. This will utilize your microphone and speakers, or if you have a USB headset or something like that. You can also dial in the dial pad here. Remember, I'm doing it. Of course, allow it to use your microphone. I'm on the call. I can mute the call, mute my audio. I can throw the call on hold. Outside users will hear the music. All right, All right I'm back on the call now. I can end the call, or I can transfer it to another user. Doing an attended transfer, meaning I'm going to announce the call first, or just do a simple transfer. Type in the extension I want to transfer to. and click add call, or I could have clicked on the user and it successfully transferred to that user. So super easy to use. Um, I can start a meeting, which will open up another window. All right, this is, I'm logged in as John Doe. This is John Doe's meeting. We could put in John Doe's email address and a, a pin for the guests. So if they, you handed out this, uh, Meeting address before, uh, you could change the pin so they can't get back into it. Use it unbeknownst. We can click Start Meeting. I want to allow access to your camera and microphone. There we are. We can mute the video. As you see there, mute the audio, which I'm going to keep muted. Um, and we can go to the conference settings and choose the camera, microphone, and speaker settings. Okay. Go back here can enter the meeting. Okay, at this point, I'm going to open up another browser. Let's see here. Oh, I got to go back here. I'm sorry. And within the meeting, I can go to settings and I can copy the link to the meeting. There's several ways of doing this, but once you're in the meeting, that's by far the easiest way to do it. Uh, you'll see some other ways as we go along here. So I'm just going to copy the link here like I'm an outside person. That is why I'm incognito in the other, on the other one, so I can do two things at once here. Not the optimal way to do it, but um, for the purposes of this training, it will work. I'm gonna go ahead and join the meeting. First thing I'm gonna do is mute myself and enter the meeting. I'm muting it so I don't get a bunch of echo, okay? So here we are in the meeting. I'm gonna go back to the other screen. So I'm controlling the meeting here. So I have the end meeting tab where they don't have it in the other one. I can change the layout and see everyone in the meeting on one screen. I can turn my video on and off. I can mute, mute and unmute you know. myself. Those same settings that we saw before with the camera. Okay, I can share my screen. You have to load the plugin to do that, but essentially you have a spreadsheet or something like that you can share with all the people in the meeting. Uh, and I can end it here or up here. Very simple to use. All right. 
close out of that. And that was the other screen. So it had, it had uh, kicked me out of the meeting because I was controlling the meeting. All right. We can start a chat with the UC users. Um, Mike is the only one available right now. So you can click on Mike, slash your green, you can do a chat with them. Oops. And that's it. That's the chat. Uh, I can see the participants in here, edit the chat so I can add other people. I can start a meeting with Mike if I wanted to. All right, I'm gonna go back to the home screen. So you can do meetings with people to collaborate, chat with them, chat within a meeting if you want to, call them, call anybody. <laughs> um, all right, so that's, uh, oh, there is an account manager screen here and I can open it up for you. You don't need to use this. This was the old way of doing things. It does come into play occasionally, but for the standard user, you would definitely not need to use it. All right, so that's what it looks like. But everything you can do here, you can do it on the other screen, so there's no need to go in there. I just wanted to show you, in case you're curious. So out of the contacts, we have all the contacts, just our company contacts, our personal contacts, which you could you know, add one and put in somebody's cell phone or something. And if you clicked on it, it would use the soft phone to call them or your favorites. And the way you make a favorite is just, you select somebody and you click the star next to them. Now they're your favorite. So I'm my own favorite now. Okay. Uh, the next thing down here, is the chatting we're already in there from the other screen so again you know there's multiple ways these are going to take you to various places in here start a meeting it's going to take you to the meeting page um, you could do a quick meeting here this is your own meeting that has your own url and you could do the guest pin uh, you, again you can copy the link from here as well uh, voicemails i'll go ahead and leave myself a voicemail here Show you this. Hi, this is Peter. Sorry I missed your call, but please leave your name and number and a brief message after the tone, and I'll return it as soon as possible. Thank you. Please leave your message after the tone. When done, hang up or press the pound key. Hi, right, it's Peter with Unitel leaving a test message. You can delete this. Thank you. Okay, so my light is on on my phone now. Got the phone extension 100 right next to me. And by the way, this dial does tie in with your phone, whereas um, you can have a, a wave attachment via email of, of your voicemail messages. If you can delete that all you want, it is not gonna affect the phone or this in any way, shape or form. However, the UC client is tied within the phone. So if I delete it from here, it's gonna delete it from my phone. So I can mark it as read or delete right here, or I can click on it and open it up. Oops, going too fast here. And it's going to transpose the message down here. I can play it and pause it here. Hi, it's Peter with Unitel, leaving a test message. Download you can it delete and save it. it. Thank you. Or I can delete it. Or mark it as read. So it's not much to it there. Delete it. I cannot show the message again if I don't want to see it. I'll leave myself a fail safe. Okay. And then you can see your read and unread, but there are no messages in here. So nothing to see. Call history. All the calls that went to this phone. Get that thing out of there. Um, you can search by name if you wanted to and just see any calls to Unitel. Um, just the calls in the last 7, 14 month or custom or all. Um, you can put in the dates that you want to see them from. You can filter inbound, outbound, or missed calls. And then if you see a number you like, you can click on it. Hello. Hello. Neat stuff. Okay. Next thing here we have is the present settings. This is within the UC client and other UC client users. You can mark yourself as away and you'll see it changes there. Uh, do not disturb. We'll go right to voicemail. Make yourself invisible to other users on the UC client. <laughs> or you can go to your settings. All right, so this is your, uh, you can edit your contact information in here and save it. Um, I can unfavorite myself. Conference settings, same things we've seen in other places um, where you can change, you know, the camera it's using and things like that. The appearance, what is in the background, whether it's in random order or you want to see just one picture. Security, your password, you can change. Uh, calling, it's a lot to go over in here. This is your inbound dialing rules to your phone. What happens when someone calls your phone? 
Starting at the top, you can forward your phone to an outside line, another mailbox on the system, another, oops, excuse me, another extension on the system, and select one of the extensions on your system, or an outside line. You will not use SIP trunk, so I'm not going to bother going over that. So all calls that are transferred or are directed to your phone or ring your phone will now go here, as long as that is on. Do not disturb. We'll send all your calls to whatever is marked busy down here. Now you can actually change that. By default, it's set to bring to your phone. Um, so you could change this here if you wanted to, but most people leave it just, they, that's what they want to have happen when they put do not disturb on, have it go directly to their mailbox. So, All right. So down here, uh, one thing you can do is if it's offline, you lose internet, you lose power, uh, whatever may happen um, causes your phone to go down, it will automatically ring to the number here. Uh, so that may be your cell phone number most likely. So yeah, we've had people say, you know, what happens if my circuit goes down? I, I don't want to miss any calls. We'll just put this in there and you don't have to do anything. It does it automatically. All right. So that is a very useful feature. Um, you don't have to use that, but it, it is there for you. Uh, one of the other things that are very popular, and you have all these options, you're not going to use hardly any of these other than maybe an outside line, um, try first, but you'd probably call forward your phone up there. The most popular thing is, uh, you know, you can send it to another extension if you wanted to, for instance, but find me is one of the best features to use. Um, you can hit configure find me settings here will ask you to save it um, you can click up here takes you to the same spot multiple ways to get to the same place all right so it tells us we've saved it so you have two options here you can ring simultaneous meaning that it's going to ring both these places at the same time so a popular thing um, and you can put in a bunch of numbers here and just select what you want to have on and off at any given time so let's say that's my cell phone number there it's going to read my extension and my cell phone at the same time, all the time for 20 seconds. And if I don't answer it, it's going to go to my mailbox. I have all those same options. I could send it somewhere else if I see fit. And do I want it always active or only active during certain times? So my choice is here from time to time. And I can include the weekends or not. And after outside these hours, where does it go? Most people, it's your mailbox, but you have the same options there. Okay, or you can go sequentially, which is probably less popular. Uh, and the way this works, it's just going to say we did this. It's going to try my extension first. Then it's going to go to extension 217. Then it's going to go to the outside line number in order. And it's going to ring each location for 20 seconds. Um, when I pick up the call, it's going to ask me to press 1 to take the call, especially on an outside number. And it does that because if it rings your cell phone number, um, it's called answer supervision. And if it didn't have that and it rang for 20 seconds and your cell phone picked up, cell phone voicemail picked up the call first, it would then be going to your cell voicemail as opposed to your work voicemail. And if you're using your personal phone, then you don't want that to happen in most cases. Uh, some people do, but most people don't. So and that is, that's not what is done simultaneous. This is only sequential we're talking here. All right, so you have the option to, to uh, have them uh, screen the calls. So you have the uh, outside caller record their name. It will play that first. So if, if you'll have to mess with this time if you're going to the cell phone, because if you put all these things on, it takes time to process those things. And of course, they're going to record their name before they ring out to you. So that doesn't go into the timer. But what does is you listening to it, listening to their message, and then pressing one to accept the call. And it takes a little bit of, bit of time to find your cell phone and ring you. Uh, as well. So keep all that in mind. Uh, but you can give the quality option to transfer to your voicemail in between all those. So there is there is a uh, opt out. And again, same time settings. If you want those changes, save them. Uh, and last thing on here is test your connection. Okay. And this is used uh, maybe if you have a, a home user who's on a, a uh, you know, a cheap home router and they don't have a great connection and they're using Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is not great to use with uh, voice over IP. It does work. And if you have a really good Wi-Fi, you shouldn't have any problems, but um, more often than not, you're better off plugged in. But you can certainly click here, start the test, and we'll tell you about the call and how good the call is. 
and um, the quality of it and if it's good enough quality to work. And it'll give a summary for you and we'll show you red and, and um, green dots indicating whether the connection is good or not. All right, it's almost done here. Okay. So it's going to do the speed test and it's going to do the voice over IP test. That's what, after it's done doing this, it will show um, the summary of it. We're almost done. We'll let it finish. There we go. So the summary will show you if it's all green. It was unable to do a SIP test. We probably have that blocked in our network. But again, you don't need to use that that often. You'll probably be talking to us at that point. Anyhow, um, if you're on the East Coast, use the Philadelphia server. If you're on the West Coast, use the Phoenix one. Okay. And uh, last thing I want to show you is the applications. Oh, by the way, if you click this, it will expand it so you can see what these different things are. Uh, but the applications, account manager, we're already in that other screen. It's the same thing that goes to the old style account manager. But here you have a Cornex a, a mobile app that you can download. You can just take a picture with your Android or your iPhone. and It'll automatically open the Google Play Store and you'll be able to download it immediately. And then once you download it, it will actually have a thing on the screen that says uh, load data by QR code. You can then just press that and hold your phone up to this. It'll read it and put in all your credentials, your username and password, and log you in immediately. So kind of neat stuff. Uh, one thing to point out is we went over the Find Me feature. Either use Find Me or use the mobile app. Don't use both at the same time. Okay, that concludes our training for today. Thank you very much. If you want more information, you can go to askunitel.com. Thank you.